All right. Good morning, everyone. We are here. Sorry for the delay. We had some technical issues, but Diane managed to work through them, and here we are. So welcome to all of you here and those online. We're glad that you're here this morning, and uh, we just welcome you to church this morning. Are you ready for church this morning? Ready to worship yeah. God? We're going to worship Jesus this morning, and uh, as we head that direction, let's take a look at a few announcements just to get these straight. Um, today is Isaac, Isaac's birthday. He's Isaac uh, Gamboa. I don't know. I know your name, Isaac. I just, you know, Isaac Gamboa has a birthday today, so happy birthday, Isaac. I trust he's watching today. I don't see him here, but maybe he's on his way. Uh, and uh, so happy birthday to you. Just need to let you know of a couple of things. In the back of the room, there is uh, two sign-up sheets for the Watermelon Festival, which is on July 31st. And so on July 31st, uh, we're going to need people to help us to serve and sell watermelon and pie. Also, we need some people to sign up to provide pies. And you are, are uh, you can bring buy some pies and bring them to us, or you are allowed to make pies if you'd like to do that and uh, bring those. So um, either way, we're good to go, but we're going to need your assistance. And so that's July 31st. I see a question. Taste testers? <laughs> I don't generally have to sign people up for that because they just volunteer. But other than that, the other things... <laughs> uh, so if you have any questions, the sign-up sheets are in the back, so go ahead and look at those. Also coming up, our uh, City Fest, Greater Hermiston City Fest, and out in the foyer is a table, and on that table there are some yard signs. You just have a few, but if you're interested in taking a yard sign, putting it up in your yard, if you're somewhere in a main thoroughfare and the, it would be seen, uh, we have a few of those. We have... Uh, these window stickers for your car, and I'm told that they come off easily, so don't worry about sticking stuff to your car. We have door hangers, although just a few of those, and um, I don't know if you want to use those. There's uh, a card, City Fest card, and this is mainly for your information. It kind of tells you some information about the fest, but we do have 500 tickets, and uh, th this event doesn't require a ticket, but this is a way to invite people, and that's what City Fest is all about. It's inviting your neighbors and your friends. That When we had our prayer cards, uh, we wrote down five names of people. Hopefully it was someone nearby that you know that needs Jesus in their life. And so this is a way to uh, remind them about it and hopefully get them there so they can uh, enjoy all the activities and listen to the gospel. Uh, and we encourage you to go with them if you can. I know that not everyone's going to be available to go, but even if you're not going to City Fest, and I know that you know some a wedding is going on, uh, go ahead and take some of these promotion materials. That'd be great, and and be praying for City Fest. This is a huge thing, and so we want to do what we can to support the uh, best way we can. All right. So this week is camp. So youth camp. We're gonna. I'm going to take up some kids. We have eight kids going to camp, and so uh, be praying for them that God would get a hold of their lives uh, this week and for safety on the way there and back again. And our missionaries of the week this week are Steve and Julie Kramer, missionaries with uh, City Serve International. So be praying for them. There they are, the whole family. We have some, uh, some pretty serious prayer needs this morning that we need to pray about. And so I'm writing those down real quick. Oh, yeah. Okay, so I have three here, and there may be more, but I have these three specifically that were brought to my attention. Uh, one is Randy Johnson. He has been uh, having an issue these past few days. with uh, He's just been feeling very weak. Uh, he's had some issues with a, a little bit of pain and just not feeling well at all. And so uh, we don't know if it's a thyroid thing or whatever, but we know that God 
is the healer and he's able to touch Randy and strengthen him again. And I know they're watching this morning, so let's pray for Randy this morning. We also got a request via text from Debbie Sherman, who is down in California, uh, helping her sister down there with uh, a fire break for their house because there are fires going on. Uh, and so they, she's asked specifically for prayer for that situation, that there be protection for her sister, and, and you know we can pray for all the people down there. And then finally, Sheila uh, Moore is having some issues as her doctor is moving her from uh, adjusting her medication or something, and, it, and it's affecting her really, really seriously. So we want to pray for her. So if we could just take a moment before we sing this morning, uh, if you would pray with me, I would appreciate that. And I just want to remind you, as we pray, ladies, there is the ladies' prayer on Tuesday afternoons. And uh, for everyone, we have prayer here, right here in the sanctuary, 6 o'clock on Sunday evening. So uh, you can take advantage of those situations. We need to pray. Uh, God's people need to be people who pray. And so let's pray for these needs, shall we? Join with me, will you? Yeah, stand with me and let's pray. Lord, we come to you humbly. We come to you, Lord, knowing that as your children, you love us and you care for us. And we bring these loved ones to you this morning. And God, we ask your touch. We ask, Lord, that you would meet these needs, these various needs. For Randy, Lord, he has a, a serious physical need in his body. Lord, he, he, uh, his body needs to be stabilized. <clears throat> and Lord, whatever is causing this, I pray, God, that you would return his body to its normal functions, that you would give him strength and energy once again. Lord, we ask that you would touch him with a healing touch right now in Jesus' name. As we pray, Lord, we ask in Jesus' name and we ask God that you would touch him and heal him and, and uh, make him feel better even right now as we pray. Lord, we pray for the situation in California, for Debbie Sherman's sister and family down there. God, we pray for protection. Lord, we don't want to see another year like we did last year with the wildfires. But God, so, so we pray that you, would, uh, that you would interrupt these things, that, Lord, these fires would be defeated, and, God, that you would bring protection and wisdom and, and help to these folks who are in danger zones. I pray, God, specifically for Debbie and, and Paul as they're there to help this family. Uh, God, that you would protect them and that you would uh, protect their belongings down there. We ask this in Jesus' name. We present this to you, Lord, and ask for your uh, intervention in this situation. And finally, Lord, we pray for Sheila as she is uh, dealing with some issues with her medications. I pray, God, that you would touch her body right now, Lord. Help her to adjust. God, I pray that you would touch her with a healing touch, that you would... Be, uh, that your joy, Lord, would be her strength, that you would touch her body, that you would heal her. Lord, that you would lift up not only her physical body, but God, her spirit as well. Lord, encourage her. Strengthen her, Lord, spiritually and physically. Lord, let her know that you're with her, God, right now. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Lord, not because we deserve anything more and what you've done, but because we know that you're a loving Father and that you care and that you have told us, we need to pray. So thank you, Lord, for hearing us this morning. And now, Lord, as we worship you in song, I pray that our hearts would be lifted to you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Let's sing. God is with us now, amen. Everyone who longs for truth, needing hope and strength renewed, come and meet the Savior of the world. Everyone who longs inside, desperate for words of life, come and meet the Savior of your soul. God is with us now. 
His love reigns down. His love reigns now. Saved by grace and power, His love reigns down. His love reigns now. God is with us now. And everyone who lives in Christ died to self and raised to life. Come and praise the Savior of the world. Everyone who perseveres, faith will overcome all fears. Come and praise the Savior of your soul. God is with us now. His love reigns down, His love reigns now. Saved by grace and power, His love reigns down, His love reigns now. God is with us now. And nothing on earth can separate us, God is with us now. Nothing can take his promise from us, cause God is with us now. Nothing can take the place of Jesus, God is with us now. No more shame, no more fear, we are here for God is here. God is with us now, his love reigns down his love reigns now saved by grace and power his love reigns down his love reigns now oh god is with us now his love reigns down his love reigns now saved by grace and power his love reigns down his love reigns now god is with us now amen lord we depend on that we need your presence in our lives we need your presence lord in this place Lord, those that we've lifted up in prayer need your presence right now. Oh, God, we just pray. Lord, that you would fill the hearts of your people, that the Spirit of God would come and fill the temples, Lord, that is our hearts. Lord, we praise you this morning. We glorify you, Lord. We thank you, God. We are your people, and we shout your praise this morning. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Lord, there is none like you. There is no Savior, no Lord like our Lord. Amen. Praise your name, Lord. As we lift our hearts to you, oh God, just minister to our lives, Lord. Whatever we need right now, God, I pray that you would pour it into our hearts. Praise your name. We stand and lift up our hands. For the joy of the Lord is our strength. We bow down and we worship him now. How great, how awesome is he. Together we sing. Everyone sing. God Almighty, proclaim it this morning. The earth is filled with his glory. Holy is the Lord, God Almighty. The earth is filled with his glory. The earth is filled with his glory. We stand and lift up our hands for the joy of the Lord. 
Lord is our strength. We bow down and we worship you now. A great, how awesome is he. Together we sing. Everyone sing. filled with his glory holy is the lord god almighty the earth is filled with his glory the earth is filled with his glory it's rising up It's rising up all around. It's the anthem of the Lord's renown. Together we sing. Everyone sing. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Let's just fill this room with praise this morning. Lord, we praise you. Lord, we glorify you. Lord, we sing. We praise you, Lord. We lift up our hearts and our hands before you this morning, Lord, humbly. Lord, no matter what kind of a week we've had, no matter what kind of issues are in our life, Lord, you are still good. You are good. You are God. You are our King and our Lord and our Savior, and you're there. Oh, God, may your people be revived. Cause us, Lord, to be revived, Lord, to look to you once again, to hunger for your word, to hunger, Lord, for your righteousness. Lord, we seek you this morning. Meet us here, Lord. Hallelujah. We are hungry for you, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Glory, glory. Praise your name. Hungry I come to you for I know you satisfy And I am with you Does not run dry So I wait for you I wait for you. I'm falling on my knees, offering all of me. Jesus, your all, this heart is living. Can I run to you for your arms are open wide? I am weary, but now your touch restores my life, and I wait for you. I wait for you, Lord, I wait for you, and I'm 
praise you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And we do seek you with all of our hearts. We seek you with all that we are. Lord, I pray right now in this moment, Lord, that you would touch my wife. Lord, that you would touch her and heal her. We thank you, Lord, because you are here. And we're not going to let any kind of thing interrupt, Lord, your, our worship to you. And we thank you, Lord because we know that you love her and that you care for her and that you're healing her right now. So God, we just take a moment, we just take a break right now and we pray for healing, oh Lord, that you would touch her. Oh God, we praise your name, we praise your name, we need you, Lord. I know, God, that you are the healer. Lord, that's where we put our trust, that's where we put our faith. Oh God, in Jesus' name, I pray for a healing touch. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, God, praise your name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise your name. As you continue to pray, I'm going to, where this last song is uh, about the Holy Spirit. And today we're going to be talking about the giftings of the Holy Spirit, 1 Corinthians 12. And so we're going to invite him into our hearts, invite him into our worship and praise. You know, it's, it's really hard to honor God without him. I mean, it's impossible to honor God without the Holy Spirit in our life, his presence. <clears throat> there is nothing worth more that will ever come close. Nothing can compare you're our living hope your presence lord and i've tasted and seen of the sweetest of love and my shame is undone and my shame is undone in your presence, Lord. Oh. to be overcome by your presence, Lord. There is nothing worth more that will ever come close. Nothing can compare. You're our living home. Your presence, Lord. I tasted and seen of the sweetest of love, where my heart becomes free and my shame is undone. Your presence, Lord. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come. 
come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for to be overcome by your presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness, Lord. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for to be overcome by your presence, Lord. Lord, we invite your glorious presence in this place by your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We praise you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory, glory to your name. You may be seated. things going. I appreciate you ladies who just take it upon yourself to go and pray when prayer needs to happen. And I know if it was a guy that it would be the guys doing that. I'm not saying that the ladies are doing something that we wouldn't do, but uh, I appreciate a church that loves God, a church that loves us so much. I, I keep hearing people talk about how you're praying for us as our family, and I appreciate that so much. It is so, so needed uh, as your pastors to uh, be in, uh, in prayer for us, to lift us up, to uh, ask God to protect us because, uh, you know, leaders can come under certain attacks that, um, that happen. And uh, so I appreciate that so much because we certainly pray for you. We pray for you every day. And so thank you so much. Well, God is good, amen? Yeah. Amen. Now, I was thinking this morning that I was coming over, I was thinking, why is it that we come and do this every Sunday? Is this just, is it because we feel guilty if we didn't come to church on Sunday? Or is it because we love each other? Well, I know that's, that's a big, big part of it right there, that the fellowship that happens among this group is amazing. Uh, and I don't think you're, you're here out of guilt. I hope you're not here out of guilt. But I hope you're here because we're strengthened. When, when we come together, we're strengthened. You know, God didn't intend for us to be loners. Uh, that's why he gave us each other. And today as we're talking about spiritual gifts in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, we're going to see it as a, as a whole body thing. It's a church thing. It's not, you know, this gift for this person for, and this gift for that. But this is, we're talking about the body of Christ and how God wants to empower us to minister to each other, like has been done this morning, and to minister to our community. Without the Holy Spirit's power, we're just spinning our wheels, amen? It's just, we're just in our own strength. And that doesn't fly. Because what did God say about that? Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord, amen? We need a big dose of his Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, there's a lot of excitement about among believers about spiritual gifts. A lot of that goes on. But just as in Corinth, I think that many, uh, many in, in Corinth were seeking gifts 
And just like then, them, uh, their understanding is lacking a little bit sometimes. I think that happened then, and, and I think that it happens a little bit now. So I think it's important for us to, to take a look at this. Paul makes it very clear in this chapter, uh, in this chapter 12, that the gifts come from the, from the Holy Spirit, and they come at God's pleasure to accomplish His will, not for any other reason. So God passes out His gifts to His people, for his reason, to accomplish his will. It's not so that you can be better than somebody else. It's not that at all. It's all about God's will and his and what he wants. Uh, there are, they, uh, excuse me, they are meant, the gifts are meant to be for ministry, as I said, uh, especially to the church, to minister amongst one another, but also as we minister outward, which if we're not doing that, then we're missing it. Uh, to minister outward, we need his giftings in our lives as well. So as we examine each gift listed here in chapter 12, uh, I think that you'll notice uh, that Jesus manifested each one of these uh, in his ministry over 2,000 years ago, or or about 2,000 years ago when he was on this earth, he would uh, manifest these very same giftings. And so it was God's intention that What Jesus did, that we should be able to do as well, that we should uh, minister one to another as well. His example alone then should guide us in our use of gifting as God sees it, sees fit to give it to us. Uh, And this was his example. As you see Jesus, and uh, he would heal people, he would uh, get a word of wisdom, he would, uh, all of these things that we're talking about here, you will notice this very important thing. Never, ever did he do these things to bring attention on himself. But he's God. He's God the Son. He's amazing. He's the King. But he never used gifts of the Holy Spirit to bring attention on himself. Why did he do it? He did it to minister to those who were needy, and he did it to bring glory to the Father. You'll find him saying that over and over again, being glory to the Father. So that's his example to us. And if we are gifted, if the Holy Spirit sees fit to give us certain gifts in our, in our body here, then those are the reasons why we uh, should, should do it. So a lot of believers are excited about the spiritual gifts. We need a little instruction, a little understanding, but we're excited because God wants to use us. He didn't just spin the world and then sitting back and not dealing with us, just watching us spin. But then there are other believers, and they're believers, mind you, not unbelievers, other believers who shy away from gifts, from spiritual gifts. They claim that, oh, this was only for the first century church. It was for them, not for us today, because we have the completed Bible and all this. But, you know, are they correct in their opinion? I would say not. I think not. I can't agree with that opinion because I believe it is clear that God is working in his church today and I would love to see it more and more and more and I know that you would too in our church, even here in Oregon. He's working uh, as much in his church today as he ever did then and there's no place to say that I can find in scripture that says that that uh, the Holy Spirit's working through gifts has ceased. I, I don't see that. Uh, and so I believe that they are necessary and needed. So then, are we better than they are because we believe that the gifts are for today and they don't? A thousand times no. No. Because if we have that attitude, we're just completely unchristlike and we're missing the point. Again, it's not about us. It's about God's purposes, God's will. God has, is gracious to all of his children, no matter what their understanding is about certain subjects. I'm sure that there's something in me that God is being gracious about. Well, you just don't get that, but I'm gracious to you. I'm sure that that's the case. and I'm appreciative of that, and I'm humble, humbled by that. So I'm never going to say, well, pfft, so much for you if you think this is not for today, well, you know, and that's just missing the point. And I think the Corinthian believers, in a sense, was kind of like that. Uh, they weren't 
not believing that spiritual gifts were, but they had the spiritual gifts, and they uh, kind of felt that it was a, a, a badge of honor, perhaps. No matter what opinion we start with, our information and our instructions about gifts needs to come from here. And so that's why we're looking at 1 Corinthians 12. In fact, this is the beginning of a three-chapter discussion on the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Uh, chapters 12, 13, and 14, we see Paul dealing with this, and this is probably a question from that letter that the Corinthians sent to him and said, yeah, well, what about this? What about the gifts? And so he was very clear. So chapter 12, we see kind of an introduction. He lists nine of the gifts, although that's not all the spiritual gifts there are. Uh, he lists nine gifts, and he lists all of these things. Chapter 12, is all about, or 13, is all about the motivation behind using your gifts. Of course, we know it as the love chapter. How many have heard that title for chapter 13? It's the love chapter. It's right there in the middle. It's the heart of the issue. And then 14, we see proper worship, the proper use of the gifts uh, in church. So as we go into this, we'll see uh, how he gives... Uh, oh, excuse me. Uh, so as we go into this, in Paul's discussion about the gifts, there are two things that I want us to keep in the forefront of our mind as we discuss this, as we look at this. One, the Holy Spirit gives gifts as he desires. Okay, as he desires. And the second thing is this, the gifts, the purpose of the gifts is to minister to others for the glory of God. Those two things, nothing else. So as we look at this discussion, <coughs> excuse me, I want you to keep these in the forefront of your mind. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, we see Paul giving a, a brief introduction in the first three verses here. Chapter 12, 1 through 3. Now, about the gifts of the Spirit, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagan, somehow or other, you were influenced and led astray to mute idols. Therefore, I want you to know that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus be cursed. And no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. So he begins with that statement, and we've talked about it before, I don't want you to be uninformed, or I don't want you to be ignorant about these things. And he uses this same phrase in other places. In uh, 1 Corinthians 10, he talks about, uh, I don't want you to be uninformed about the way that the Old Testament uh, is a typology of, of Christ and of the gospel. And in 1 Thessalonians 4, he says, I don't want you to be uninformed. I don't want you to be ignorant of the fact that about the rapture of the church, that Jesus is going to come and take us home. And in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, he, he says, I don't want you to be uninformed about the tactics of the enemy, of Satan. And then in Romans chapter 11, he says, I don't want you to be uninformed about the future of Israel, of the church. So this is really important to him, all of these issues are very important to him. And now we're talking about, I don't want you to be uninformed about the spiritual gifts. I don't want you to have the wrong idea and not realize the, the purpose of God giving these gifts. <clears throat> Their understanding of these things was very important to Paul. Interestingly enough, these topics, these, uh, I don't want you to be ignorant about we're still ignorant about these things, or s several of us are ignorant about these things, even in our day. And it causes strife, it causes divisions, it causes all kinds of things. But Paul says, listen, I don't want you to be uninformed. I want you to know the truth. And I want the truth to bring you together in unity. And he refers to their past idolatry. Somehow you guys were, were drawn away by mute idols, but now you've got questions about the truth and spiritual things, and so I want to clear this up. Apparently there was a rumor in Paul's day, and I read this from a, a commenter, I'm not sure about this, I'm just, uh, this is what he said. Uh, there was a rumor in Paul's day that if you were praying in the Spirit, if you were praying uh, with groanings that no one can understand, praying maybe in, a, in a, another language, 
that somehow unknowingly you could curse Jesus. Not knowing what you're saying, you might accidentally curse Jesus. This idea might still be held by some today, but of course it's the Spirit. It's not going to happen. Paul says, no, you can't. If you're speaking by the Spirit of God, you cannot say Jesus is cursed. You can't do it. It, it doesn't happen. And then the other thing here is he mentions the Lordship of Christ only happens when the Spirit is resident in you. He can only be Lord of you. You can only say Jesus is Lord and mean it when the Holy Spirit is prompting you to do so, when, when God's presence is in your life and you know that truth. Now, anyone could say, oh, yeah, Jesus is Lord. But to mean it and, and have him actually be Lord of your life, Paul says, it's only the Holy Spirit. We know that the Bible teaches us that it's the Holy Spirit that draws people to Christ in the first place. That there's no way we could come to Christ unless our faith was, was spurred on and that we were drawn to Christ by his Holy Spirit. And he goes on in verses 4 through 6 and gives us some basic facts about God and his people. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in everyone, it is the same God at work. So while there are various gifts, servings, and works, there is only one source, only one purpose at hand. There's one God that accomplishes all these things through his people. And we see the Trinity here. Did you notice that? Uh, it says there are different kinds of gifts, but, but the same spirit. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of works, uh, but the same God at work, same Father. The Greek word uh, for gifts, and that's what we're talking about today, is charisma. Is that right? He's our Greek scholar back there. Charisma. Um, and charisma has the same, it comes from the root word charis in Greek. And, and if you're not interested in Greek, that's okay. But it's interesting because gifts, charisma, comes from the same word, root word, charis, which means grace. So that tells you a lot about how gifts ought to be used and seen. It's the grace of God. Not only the grace of God that he would choose to use me as, uh, as one of his kids to, uh, to use these gifts, but also that I would grace other people with the use of these gifts. We as the church, again, I'm talking about the group, as the church, we grace each other and we grace our community with these gifts, charis, charisma. I don't think I'm reading too much into that, but I just thought that was very important. The idea that a gift is mine and some sort of achievement is completely un inappropriate and it's missing the point. And I think that's what was going on in Corinth. They were kind of hanging on to these gifts. Oh, this is what I do. I do this. I speak in tongues. I have a gift of healing. I have a gift of special gift of faith and all these kind of things. And I think that's completely un uh, inappropriate and it's missing the point. So here we see in the next section here, verses 7 through 10, we see the list, a list of nine manifestation gifts. And as I said, it's not an exhaustive list. We see in Romans 12, Ephesians 4, there's other lists and in other various passages of, of other kinds of gifts. These are what's called the manifestation gifts. But there's also gifts of service and, and all of those kind of things. Uh, so we're talking about the manifestation gifts here. So let's take a look at them one by one. Verse 7. Now to each one the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. <clears throat> to one there is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom. So let's pause there for a second. Message of wisdom, word of wisdom. Probably heard of that. Uh, and basically, that's an understanding or an insight into an issue that you didn't previously have any insight into. You didn't know about. Not only that, but, it, but you have the plan. You have the answer. You, you can apply God's word to this situation. By the power of the Holy Spirit, you've got the insight and you've got the answer 
for the situation. That's a word of wisdom. That's the message of wisdom. And then to another, a message of knowledge. Of course, that would be, and we're speaking supernaturally, not just knowing stuff, but knowing things that you didn't know because the Holy Spirit has given you that knowledge. Good example of this is Jesus and the woman at the well. Remember when the woman was there and uh, so he has this conversation with her and he goes into the whole thing of, why don't you bring your husband up here? And, well, I don't have a husband. That's right. You, the man you're living, or you had, what, five husbands and the guy you're living with now isn't even your husband. Now, Jesus didn't just know that because he was God, but it was, the, it was a word of, wisdom, or of knowledge to him that he knew this, it wasn't so he could say, you're uh, this shady lady. No, it was so he could minister to her. So he could glorify God in her. And you know, she became an incredible witness to Samaria after that encounter. I don't know if you watched the Chosen series, but that part with the lady at the well, it was amazing. I think they did a great job of capturing the spirit of this lady and the gratitude that she had when Jesus saved her and, and forgave her of her sins. Anyway, that, that is an example of a word of knowledge by means of the same spirit. To another faith. Okay. Oh, I, I had another comment here. I should have turned the page. Speaking of wisdom and knowledge, it's really important to know things and to have plans and all of that kind of thing. When I served in the Army, I was in the 502nd Intelligence and Security Command. Uh, and intelligence means that you're, you're gaining information. You're getting information. Uh, so our job was to collect information and knowledge as we were sitting on the border of East and West Germany uh, to get knowledge about the guys on the other side of the border, on the east side. We were on the west, they were on the east. So our job was to intercept information by radio. That wasn't my job. Uh, but we had guys who would listen to the radio, their radio communications of their armies, of, of the Soviet army, and they would write down what they said and they would get information from that. Uh, we also, <coughs> uh, so by ra radio and by radar, radar was my side. I, that's what I did. I intercepted the radar signals. Uh, the reason for this is so that we could have as much information as we can, know your enemy, as much information as we can to deal with any kind of a threat that might pop up. So we could know, well, this is what they normally do, or this is what they've been saying, or this is what's going on. This is what they're doing. And so it's important for us to be ready for any kind of a threat that might come from the Eastern Bloc, and that was my job. We use terms like comment, which means communications intelligence. That would be the radio and all of those kind of things. We use the term ELINT, which means electronic intelligence, and that's what I did. It was non-communications. It was, uh, we, we measured radar signals and all of that so that we could identify the radars and where they came from. We even knew where they were based just from their signals. <coughs> and there's HUMINT, which we didn't deal with, but that would be like people being informers from the other side or uh, somebody being interrogated and that kind of information that came from them. But God, by his spirit, gives us intelligence regarding a situation as well. As he passes out the gifts of, wis of wisdom and knowledge to us, we have information that we didn't already have to deal with the situation much better. I guess you could call it spirit. That's what I, I just came up with that name. I thought it was funny at the time. So we have comment, elint, humant, and spirit. That's, that's what we deal with. Okay, faith. So to another faith. Now faith, we're not referring to saving faith here. Everybody has a measure of faith in your life, or else you wouldn't be saved if you're saved. Uh, you can't come to Christ without faith. Okay, But this is talking about supercharged faith. This is talking about faith where maybe other people's faith is weak or non-existent. This is where there's unbelief. And somebody that God would gift with this gift of faith comes into the situation and encourages people and encourages them to, to trust in God where maybe they didn't feel, feel up to it. <clears throat> For instance, Peter and the lame man, remember that situation where 
Peter says, get up and walk in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. And so by the faith that, that Peter had, I know Jesus is wanting you to get up and walk. So I have the faith. I have that belief and that trust. And it happened. It encouraged this guy to have faith as well. Well, he said it, and he said, Jesus of Nazareth. And I heard about Jesus. Maybe he's, he's known a little bit about Jesus. I'm going to stand up. Because I think, I, I think what this guy's telling me is true. And his faith would, grew because Peter's faith. Excuse me. Peter's faith helped him to that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Gifts of healings. Same story. Gifts of healing. By the same spirit, some people have gifts of healing. For uh, each situation of healing. <clears throat> now, this isn't to say that maybe somebody might be have a gift of healing and so they, they're just ready to take on everything and anything. But I believe that God, <clears throat> since this is in, in plural... He gives gifts of healings for, for situations that need healing. Uh, and, and again, this isn't about the person who's ministering in the gift of healing, but this is about the person who needs the healing. This isn't for, your, for you. This is to help that person who needs healing. God is the healer, not man. God's doing it. It's not me. Uh, and so, again, back to Acts chapter 3, verses 1 through 16. Peter and the lame man. Let's, let's go ahead and read that. Peter and the lame beggar. <clears throat> one day Peter and John, 1 through 16, yeah. One day Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer at 3 in the afternoon. Now a man who was lame from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful, where he was put there every day to beg from those going into the temple courts. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Didn't ask him for healing, he asked them for money. Peter looked straight at him, as did John, and his faith was kicking in. And then he said to Peter, he said, look at us. So the man gave them his attention, expecting something from them. And Peter said this, silver or gold I do not have, but what I have I give to you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk taking him by the right hand, he helped him up. And instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong and he jumped up to his feet and he began to walk. And when he went with them into the temple courts, walking and jumping and praising God, uh, when all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized that this was the same man who used to sit out and beg in the temple gate called Beautiful. Beautiful. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. While the man held on, uh, held on to Peter and John, all the people were astonished and came running to them in the place called Solomon's Colonnade. When Peter saw this, he said to them, Fellow Israelites, why does this surprise you? Why do you stare at us as if by our own power or godliness that we have made this man walk? The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified this servant, or his servant, G Jesus. You handed him over to be killed. You disowned him before Pilate, though he had decided to let him, though he had decided to let him go. You design, or you disowned the holy and the righteous one, <clears throat> and asked that a murderer be released to you. You killed the author of life. But God raised him from the dead, and we are witnesses of this. That's what made him apostles, by the way. By faith in the name of Jesus, this man whom you see and know was made strong. It's G in Jesus' name and the faith that comes through him that he was completely healed. So here we see not only <clears throat> a gift of faith being rec uh, utilized, but gift of healing as well. That the Holy Spirit gave him a gift of healing and he lifted him up out of there. They didn't like massage his ankles and feet and, you know, really working on him and twisting and cracking. They just lifted him up and he was healed. So the faith and the healing came together on that. Then, of course, going with that miraculous powers that was the next <clears throat> is the next gift that's mentioned in 1 Corinthians 12 to another miraculous powers. What's miraculous powers? Well, that's abilities or deeds of power that go beyond natural ability. 
And sometimes they go against the laws of nature. Jesus did this from time to time. People who were blind were healed. People who were dead got up and were alive again. Now that's not normal. That's not normal. That was, that was a miracle. And Jesus was amazing. He was a man of miracles. But you know what? We have these gifts as well. Not for Again, not for ourselves, not so that we can wow the crowd. But we have this to glorify God. Now it's interesting, as I was looking at this, it's interesting to note something about miracles. If you look through the book of Acts, you'll find that when miracles were done by the apostles, they were done in an evangelistic way. In other words, uh, they were spreading the gospel. People were who saw this, they weren't necessarily believers, but then they saw this happened in front of them as a, as a, a kind of a demonstration that there is a God in heaven and he's powerful and he's alive and he's, he's working today. It was in conjunction with the Great Commission making disciples. The message of the gospel is confirmed by miracles and wonders. But a suggestion that I read in my studies was this, and I, and I think that it's, it's pretty much spot on. The suggestion is that a believer's faith is, isn't increased by miracles. In fact, sometimes it's the opposite. Look at the Israelites in the wilderness. They had manna from heaven. They had water from the rock. They went through the sea. And what did they do? They complained. They whined. They griped. Seeing miracles, seeing God's amazing hand at work didn't help their faith. So I think what we get out of this is that the miracle thing is mainly a demonstration to the unbelievers. But as for our faith as believers, what does the Bible tell us about our faith? What increases our faith? Not miracles. What increases our faith is uh, hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Amen? That's what it says. Uh, you'll have faith. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. That's where we get that strength. And so if we are used or see miraculous powers, just know that, oh, this is a, uh, God expressing himself to someone who needs to know he's there. I know he's there because I'm a believer. I'm one of his kids. But this is for somebody. Somebody needs to see this. Sometimes uh, people would say, oh, if I could just see a miracle or two. You know, it's so amazing. You read in the Bible and all these great things happening. It wasn't like they were happening all the time, but we read about these things. They didn't write about the mundane. I walked down the road today. I ate some, uh, some yogurt and then I went to bed. You know, there's a lot about the Bible days that we don't read about because they were not worth reading. But we see all these amazing things and we think, well, that's how it was every day, all, all day. And man, if I could just see a miracle or two, or two. But that's not necessarily how it works. Again, as a believer, you want your faith to increase? It comes through this, the Word. Get in the Word every day. Get in God's Word. Every day, get in His presence and spend time with Him. Be in the Word and let the Word be in you. The next gift is prophecy. Uh, to another prophecy. Okay. Now, prophecy is not foretelling of the future, like if you were to go on some carnival midway and see the, a tent with some mysterious woman in there and a big crystal ball. That's not what prophecy is. Prophecy isn't foretelling. It is forth-telling. It's telling forth God's wisdom or God's will. It's his heart. What does God want for you? And the prophet is speaking for God and saying, this is what God wants for you. And prophecy will bring, uh, sometimes it will bring uh, conviction. This is what God wants. This is God's heart for you. And this is what you need to deal with something in your life. Or, uh, and or, actually and, it will... Uh, hopefully draw that person to follow Christ and trust him even more, trust God even more. So if someone is prophesying, if someone is telling forth God's heart, it should bring some change, it should bring improvement into the heart of the person who's receiving this message. That's what the prophecy is for. Again, God will give that message 
God will give that gift of prophecy in his time for his purposes. And it would be, it's a wonderful thing. The next gift is discerning of spirits or the distinguishing between spirits. And this is a supernatural ability to determine what's behind a situation. It could be a, a motivation. It could be an actual spiritual being. Uh, but something behind the situation that we're seeing now. Uh, oftentimes in our own lives, and I've done this too, is we'll see somebody act a certain way or say something. We say, oh, well, you know, the, the reason they're doing this is because that. That's not discerning of, of their motives or their spirit. That's just you giving your opinion. But the gift of discernment uh, is a little different. Uh, I have I have experienced this myself from time to time uh, to where I just, I've heard somebody say something, I've heard a teaching, I've heard a preacher, I've heard something. And I just you get that, we use the expression uh, red flag. Heard that term, red flag? The red flag comes up and I go, this, this something's not right here. This, there's something wrong. I believe that's a distinguishing of, of this spirit of this motivation he's okay he just needs some sleep <clears throat> now it could be a distinguishing of a good spirit remember when Jesus uh, said to Peter says uh, what do you what about you he said well who do who do men say that I am who do people say that I am and the disciples answered but then uh, he said to his disciples, he says, well, what about you? What about you? And he asked, who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah. This is Matthew 16. You are the Messiah, the son of the living God. And Jesus, remember Jesus' reply? He said, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. This was the distinguishing of the truth of the spirit, the motivation behind me, behind my who I am, that only God revealed to you. Peter didn't know this of, of himself, but the Holy Spirit gave this to him. And I tell you that you, Peter, are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, the rock being his testimony. You are the Christ. You are the Messiah. You're the Son of the living God. You're God Almighty. You are the King. You ever proclaim that just... I encourage you sometimes if you're just you're not doing anything else, you just feel like you need a little charge up. Just start proclaiming who Jesus is, and boy, that that encourages me. He's my King, He's my Lord, He's my Savior, He's the one who loves me. I don't know why. He, he I don't deserve His love, but He loves me and He died for me. And so do those things, uh, and so. The distinguishing of spirits could be a good thing where you say, yes, I don't know, it wouldn't be a red flag, maybe it'd be a green flag, but yes, that's truth. It could be an evil spirit, could be a bad thing. Acts 16, 16 through 18, very familiar story to a lot of us, I think. Uh, 16, uh, Peter, or excuse me, Paul. Is it Paul, 16? Yeah, here we go. Paul and Silas were in, uh, where were they at? Uh, Lit uh, Philippi? No. Anyway, they were in this town on their one of their missionary journeys, the second, I believe. And in uh, Acts 16, starting with 16, says once they were going to a place, into the place of prayer, and they were met by a female slave who had a spirit, so this was an actual spiritual being in her life, by which she predicted the future. She was a foreteller, not a fourth teller. She earned a great deal of money for her owners by fortune telling. She followed Paul and the rest of us, shouting, These men are servants of the Most High God, and who are telling you the way to be saved. And she kept this up for many days. And finally, Paul became so annoyed that he turned around and he said to the spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command you come out of her. And at that moment, the spirit left her. 
So she was saying a truth, but it was, uh, as Paul discerned, it wasn't the right spirit. He discerned this by the Holy Spirit's power in him. He discerned that. And so sometimes it's a good thing. Sometimes it's a bad thing. Sometimes it's a motivation or something in somebody's life. Sometimes it's an actual spiritual being. And, and if I may, just for a moment, I want to address something regarding that. I think it's important for us to, as believers, to understand that, you know, while sickness, for instance, certainly can be caused by, by a spirit, it happens. It has happened. There's a lot of times we see that. Uh, because we know that our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against authorities, powers of the dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms, we know that, and we know that sometimes sickness or some trouble comes from that. Not every difficulty we face in life necessarily does. To credit a spirit of some sort, that there's a spirit behind this and that behind every tree, that there's a spirit, a spirit of COVID or a spirit of nail fungus, whatever it might be, it's a distraction to believers. I'm not discounting the spiritual realm. I'm not discounting the spiritual fight that we fight every day. But don't get distracted by thinking that everything around behind every tree is some kind of an evil spirit that's jumping on you. Because sometimes it's just trouble. Sometimes it's just issues. Just saying. I just wanted to bring that out. Because uh, I, I, I see people distracted by that. Uh, instead... Instead, there's a situation. Go to Jesus. Go to the Lord in prayer. Take it to him in prayer. And he will direct you. He'll let you know what's behind it. He'll tell you how to deal with it. That's what we need to do. All right. Enough said. So, the last two things we see here have to do with different tongues. In other words, uh, glossolalia is a fancy term for it, but speaking in a language that you don't know. Uh, so he says, uh, and still to another, or excuse me, uh, to another speaking in different kinds of tongues and still to another the interpretation of tongues. Okay, as a Pentecostal church, this is a big thing. Speaking in different tongues, of course, is speaking in a language that's unknown to the speaker. If I uh, know well, I know a little bit of German. If I start giving a message in German, I'm not speaking necessarily by the Spirit because I kind of know a little German. It's not going to sound really great because it's really rocky. But this is talking about the Spirit giving you the enablement of speaking uh, a message, speaking praise and worship, just like on, on Acts chapter 2, speaking worship and praises to God in a language that you don't know. They, on, in Acts chapter 2, there were a lot of people there who heard them speaking in their own language and they knew that these Galileans didn't know their language, but they were praising God clearly in their language. This was the gifting of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> and then interpretation of tongues, translation. Again, if somebody is giving a message in tongues that's in Spanish and you know Spanish, well, you're not necessarily uh, doing a, the gift of the Spirit in uh, of interpretation is just because you know Spanish, but if it's like a heavenly language that nobody knows, uh, maybe it's a language of, of angels, some heavenly language. It's not just mumbling. It's not just, blah, 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 you know, messing around. I'm talking about the real deal. I'm talking about the Spirit speaking through you in a language that you don't know. Now, again, this is different when we're talking about the gifts of speaking in tongues, the gifts of interpretation. This is separate. This is a different experience than your own prayer language that if you're at home and you're praying and you don't know how to pray, so you start speaking in tongues and you're praising God that way. That's, that's not what this is. This is something that happens in the group. This is something that's the edification for the people, for the, for the saints. And it's, it's very much... Uh, because there's interpretation, it's very much like prophecy, uh, the way that we use it. But again, so Paul addresses this a lot more in chapter 14, where he talks about the propriety of how this, should, this gift should be used 
in the body and all of that. So we'll talk about that more in chapter 14. But he summarizes this in verse 11 where he says, All these things are the work of one and the same Spirit. And he distributes them each one just as he determines. Remember the two things. He gives, it, gives the gifts as he determines and to glorify God. That's the reason why there are gifts. To, it, it helps us, encourages us as a body because of these things. All right. So briefly, this is the list. Not everyone will have every gift because not everyone, there's diversity. Everybody's got different uh, parts in the body and we'll talk about this in the next part of the, of the chapter and I'm running out of time so I will briefly, briefly uh, just summarize and we'll, we'll touch on this next time before we get into the love chapter. But there's unity and diversity in the body. There's diversity in our unity, meaning that a body is made up of many parts, right? You got your feet. Your feet is certainly not your ears. That would be weird. Different functions, but it's important. There's nothing unimportant about your feet that's less important than your ears because your feet can't hear, but you need to get around. Uh, your ears can't walk, I don't know, unless you have a talent that I don't know about. Um, but you need to hear, you need to see. So we understand the whole picture, okay? And Paul, again, he, he talks about this again because these people need to needed to go back to the basics. Listen, you guys are blowing it. You have spiritual gifts in your church. In, in uh, chapter 1, verse 7, he says, you guys have all these gifts but you're blowing it because your understanding of why and how is messed up. And not everybody's going to have all these gifts because we're all different. We have different places in the body, different reasons, different purposes. Uh, just like in any body, a physical body, a body of a, a school, you've got teachers, administrators, you've got custodians, you've got all these different ones. If they were all custodians, who's going to teach the kids? Uh, if they're all teachers, who's going to clean the hall? Uh, all these different things. So we understand that point. So anyway, so Paul lists these gifts. They're not all the gifts that there are, but he lists, lists these nine gifts, very important gifts. Uh, and again, it's about the group. It's, it's about what God wants to do through us as Family Worship Center, uh, locally, but it's what God wants to do through the church of Jesus Christ globally, the body of Christ. All, everyone who is a believer, everyone who is born again, everyone who's a follower of Jesus Christ. He wants to do these things among us, and he wants to do these things through us. And so we need to choose, we need to uh, seek his will. We need to seek his gifts and say, God, if you have a reason for a certain gift, that you need me to use for your glory, I'm, I'm ready, I'm available. Are you ready for whatever he wants to do? Sometimes we hesitate. We go, I don't know. I, you know can you choose somebody else, God? Cause I, no, we need to be like the prophet who said, here am I, send me. Be willing, be ready. Be alive, be... Let's be useful for the kingdom, amen? We don't have a lot of time left. I don't know if you noticed, but our world is. So we need to spread the gospel. We need to be utilized of the Holy Spirit. We need to be utilized in these gifts. Not to be, uh, wow anybody. Not to like, woo, look at them. They're this wild, holy roller. No, it's all about making disciples. It's all about showing the love of, of Jesus to the world. Hope. That they don't have. Outside of Jesus, they don't have hope. Not real hope. They need it. And we need to be on board with that. We need to be ready for that. All right, so we need gifts. We need these things. Paul said, I do not want you to be uninformed. And I agree with him. I do not want you to be uninformed about the gifts. And so that's why I, I was really excited about sharing this chapter and all of these chapters. Because I think it's time for us to not 
to stop knowing stuff about how the church should be and being the church. Amen? We know a lot of stuff about, oh, this is how the church should be. This is what God has done. This is what we're supposed to do. Well, let's do it. Let's do it. Amen? I want, it, I want you to be encouraged. I want to be encouraged. I'm a, I am encouraged. So if it's just me, then whatever. I know it's not. So let's pray. Lord, we love you, and we acknowledge that um, while many great things have happened through your church over the years, Lord, we're not done yet. God, we are making ourselves available. As we have studied what Paul had, had told the Corinthian church about the giftings of the Holy Spirit and your desire to use us, Lord, for your glory and just for the eternal sake of other people, God, I pray that you would help us. We are willing, God. We make ourselves available. Lord, help us. We all have issues. We all have problems. We have health issues and emotional issues and financial issues. But God, those things, if we seek your kingdom first, those things will be added, Lord. Those things will be taken care of. Help us in our unbelief. Help us, Lord, in our weakness of faith to trust you and to be available for you. Use us, Lord, I pray. And I speak on behalf of Family Worship Center. Lord, use us. We're here. We're ready. We're available. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I pray you bless everyone here as we go this afternoon. Those who are watching online, bless them, God. I pray that you would bring them back to the fellowship soon. And we thank you and we praise you, Lord. May our lives be a praise to you. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. Well, thank you so much for being here and listening. And I hope that I, I want to see the church be what we're supposed to be. Amen. So that's going to start. Uh, a lot of things start with prayer. So uh, hopefully we'll see some of you tonight at 6 o'clock. Prayer right here. That was my, uh, my uh, announcement. Anyway, bless you. Amen.